Today we're talking Malik Bryant with John Garcia. We'll talk about Kyrie Elam being a great ad for any NFL team and how he fits their measurables. And we'll wrap up by talking about the impact of the Gator Collective joining forces with the Gator Guard. Only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Happy Tuesday. I'm Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole9Sports.com. Before getting to today's content, just going to ask you to like, subscribe wherever you're listening, leave a comment, review, let me know what you think of the show, let me know how I can make it better. It's greatly appreciated. We're talking recruiting today because, I mean, honestly, it, it's fun to talk about, that, and things are heating up now that 2023 kids can ta- can start taking official visits soon, and it, it's just getting really awesome here. Uh, so we're going to talk about Malik Bryant, because Malik Bryant is someone that Gators fans have been talking about for whew, months now. I've spoken about him before on the show. We, we've gone in depth on him before, but if you weren't here because the show has grown significantly since then. Malik Bryant is a four-star linebacker out of Orlando, could play the edge, could play off ball. Tightly contested recruiting battle for him right now. Uh, Schools like Alabama, Georgia, and Miami are up there uh, as well as Florida. We know that he just took a visit to Alabama a couple weeks ago. He's He's been in Miami recently. He loved their weight room. He was having a blast there. His commitment is set for July 23rd, so we, we've got a ways to go at this point. We're three months away, basically, a little bit less than that, before Malik Bryant decides where he's going. He's six foot two, 235 pounds, and according to 24-7 Sports, he is the number 35 player in the nation in the 2023 class, the number two linebacker, and the number eight player in the state of Florida, and... I, I'll, I'll say this. I try not to get too invested in recruits. You know, there are a few players where, like, I, I watch them and I really like them and I know they're interested in Florida. Like, like Shamar James this year was that guy for me where I was like, I like I need him in Gainesville. Malik Bryan's kind of that same guy for me right now. Like, I want him in Gainesville bad. From what I've seen of his tape and from what you'll hear with John Garcia in just a couple minutes here, uh, from what I've seen there, I think he's a great athlete. Uh I, th- I think he's a very talented player, or at least for a high school player. I think he's very talented. But one thing that I, I really like about him is that I know that Malik Bryant is a great personality. And that's what I mean. And I don't, I don't mean necessarily as a person. I don't know Malik like that. But I know that I see him on social media and he's uh, he, he he's always having fun. He's messing around with people. He, he's doing things like that where it's like he's an entertaining player and, and I'm I'm a fan of characters, so he's always on Twitter and Instagram just having fun. But uh, he's also someone that obviously can contribute, and I think with his specific skill set and his athletic traits, he'd be a monster in this Patrick Tony Sean Spencer defense where you're going to see creepers, creepers, you're going to see sim pressure, you're going to see a whole bunch of different looks, and Malik Bryan is one of those versatile players where he should be used how... Jeremiah Moon should have been used as an edge rusher, off-ball linebacker, moving all around the formation, figuring some things out. And I think that's how Malik Bryant should be used. Uh, But I am not the expert on Malik Bryant. That is John Garcia. So I did sit down with John Garcia. Once again, Sports Illustrated's Director of Football Recruiting and Locked On's Recruiting Insider. And here's what John had to say about Malik Bryant and his skill set and his possibility for becoming a Florida Gators defender, which, I, again, I, I really hope he does become. Malik Bryant, one of the, the most ferocious uh, second-level guys we've scouted in this class of 2023, can do a little bit of everything. You know, early on, he was more of a pass rusher, outside guy with a great first step, really puts pressure on an offensive tackle. But he's developed into a true linebacker uh, at IMG Academy where, where he spent uh, the last couple of seasons. Uh, Malik was asked to play a little bit more traditional inside backer. So we saw him develop into a, a prospect that can read and react much more than just one that attacks right when the football is, is snapped. Uh, and he's, he's created balance in his game now that I think makes him even more valuable 
at the collegiate level because you can make him uh, into a pure pass rusher. He could be an off-ball will linebacker. He can run with a tight end, maybe a running back down the field and play in space. He's obviously played in high-pressure situations with relative success. So I think that's why he kind of felt like he checked a lot of boxes and went back home uh, to Orlando to wrap up his high school career. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, going to deal with a lot of schools coming after him in recruiting uh, because he's been so high profile for so very long. I love this kid's downhill ability. I think he does have true pass rushing upside, whether he's a linebacker or an edge defender there at the next level. And he's a big kid, right? 6'3", 6'4", 230 pounds or so. So I think body-wise, he can mold into whatever your defense needs. He's certainly a scheme versatile prospect and it's understandable why so many schools are all over Malik uh, heading into his July 23rd verbal commitment. Uh, Gators are in it 100% top threat, probably Alabama where he just took his first visit. Uh, but a lot of other schools are trying to get involved here as well. So b- big reason why Malik Bryant is so coveted. So we'll see where he goes. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because while I have been trying to eat healthier, uh, it's hard to eat healthy, work out, still get all the vitamins and nutrients needed while working all day, especially, especially during draft season. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day and that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college again that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Now we're talking about Kai Ear Elam. Um, you guys know I, I am a massive fan of Kai Ear. You know, he, he's a top three corner in the class, if you're asking me. I think he's right up there with Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati and Derek Singley Jr. from LSU. I'd probably take him before Derek Singley Jr., mainly because Derek Singley has those injury concerns that which do worry me at least a little bit. Um, but that all plays into this next bit that we're talking about because when we look at the NFL draft, which is now just two days away, uh, we look at who is a good fit, where you hear this phrase now, it's getting thrown all over the place called guardrails. It's it's what the Browns kind of popularized and what kind of what people are just calling tendencies at this point, um, where we look at the Browns guardrails and they have age, they have these, these relative athletic score metrics, not specific numbers, but they clearly have a trend, um, size, and all these teams have them. All these teams have their preferences to go, we want this athlete, we don't want this athlete. Uh, Rick Spielman with the Vikings was like, we don't care if you're an athlete or not. We're just going to take you because he took some great non-athletes. Um, but Kyrie Elam is one of those players who checks all of the boxes. You look at age is a very important one, uh, specifically with someone like the Cleveland Browns. They've never taken someone that is older than 23. They've taken 23-year-olds. They've never taken someone that is older than 23. So Kyrie Elam, 20. Yeah. 20, which is obviously going to help him a ton with any NFL team. They're going to go, you know what, he's 20. He'll he'll be 20 by the time uh, the season rolls around. But he'll be 21 at the start of his rookie year, 25 or 26, depending on if he's a fifth-year guy. So 24 or 25 or 26 by the end of his rookie contract. That's a fat contract you can get there. And with someone with his skill set, if he remains healthy, a second big contract could be incoming. So age he nails. You look at the relative athletic score. If you are unfamiliar with relative athletic score, which I have discussed before, but if you're unfamiliar with it, relative athletic score basically breaks down how a player works out compared to their position historically. So it's going back to 1987, all the combine and a lot of the pro day information for workouts. So Kyrie Lim is up there where his relative athletic score is 8.63. And relative athletic score takes into account height, weight, 40, three cone, shuttle, bench, vert, broad, all, all the workouts. Um, and I, I'm not good with the analytics, but the world is becoming more increasingly analytics based as is football in general. Uh, and so 
it's coming kind of an important thing. So relative athletic score, Kyrie them has an 8.63. Most teams that do have a relative athletic score guardrail set it at 6, 7, the occasional 8. But guess what? Kyrie Elam hits all of those. He is statistically one of the most athletic cornerbacks to ever participate in the NFL Combine. So Kyrie Elam hits that threshold. He nailed that one. Height, Kyrie Elam's elite. Like if you look at the height, he's 6'1 and a half. That, that, that is elite measurables. He's one of the tallest corners in the NFL off the bat and one of the tallest, especially starting corners in the NFL off the bat. So Kyrie Elam hits that. You look at weight. He's he's good there. Obviously, he's he's taller. He's he's pretty lean. Like you look at uh, pro- probably like his uh, I forgot the name of the this the measurement, but your basically height to weight ratio probably not great for him. He, he's an average weight for a corner, but he's already taller than most corners. But he's fine there. You look at injuries, not really a concern. He had a knee injury in 2021. But that was after colliding with someone and his knee hitting them. Uh, so it's not like a long-term structural damage thing. So he's fine there. Especially when you compare him to someone like Derek Stanley Jr. who has had ankle and foot injuries over the past two seasons that have slowed him down and kind of held him back a little bit. And you look at the skill set. Kyrie Lim is not just a man's corner. He's not just a zone corner. He play, He's a specialist in press, and you should probably keep him in press, but he could play a huge variety of coverages, and that's going to be great too. So every NFL team has to fit. You look at character, no character concerns for Kyrie Lim. So you look at character, you look at the NFL pedigree, Kyrie Lim's got that. So character, uh, RAS, athletic score, height, weight, whatever it is, Kyrie Lim hits every guardrail. So I, I'd imagine that a lot of NFL teams have him high on their boards, and I think they should. Personally, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be unbiased here, but I think they should. We're going to talk about the Gator Guard and Gator Collective. So coming back to actual college sports, but off field here. Uh, but first, I'm going to talk to you guys about Bet Online because March Madness is over. NBA playoffs are here. MLB is here. The draft is here, which you could bet on because you can make yourself some money with Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. I've been using Bet Online for years now, and I couldn't be happier with it. It's got so much, not just basketball, not just baseball, not just football, not just sports, and not just in-game things. Like I said, you could bet on who gets drafted where, what pick, what team, all of that fun stuff. You don't even have to bet on individuals. You could bet how many running backs go in the first round. So you could bet on everything at this point, reality TV shows, um, award shows, politics. I don't know if you could have bet on if Elon Musk would buy Twitter, but if you did... Congrats. Uh, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action. Check out Bet Online. It's where the game starts. To wrap up today's show, we are talking about the Gator Guard and Gator Collective partnership and the impact that that will have on Florida sports because it is a big thing here. Um, dating back to the beginning, you know, we're going back to July 1st here. Gator Collective was, of course, started by Eddie Rojas, who is a former Gators baseball player. Once NIL became legal, Darren Heitner, who if you don't know him, I highly suggest you follow him. It's Heitner Legal on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he, he's played a huge part in both of these collectives being developed. Uh, so since then, the Gator Collective has become kind of the premier college collective that allows athletes to get paid. But obviously, this one is focused on Florida Gators to get paid. And high school recruits have said that the Gator Collective is part of the reason that they chose Florida or that they're considering Florida or that Florida's leading, whatever it might be. The Gator Collective is obviously playing a significant part in recruiting and in just developing this program because college athletes get to get paid. Also, it means that college athletes get to stay in school longer instead of rushing out. Um, who's a Gator that rushed out? Uh, Jordan Scarlett probably should have stayed. Ronald Powell probably should have stayed another year. But they didn't, and they went to the NFL before they were ready, and didn't really, uh, didn't really pan out. But that's not the case anymore because you can stay in college and get paid. You could look at guys like Colin Castleton, for example. Colin Castleton, we thought would go to the NBA because he entered the NBA draft last year and then withdrew, and we were like, okay, he's gonna do the same thing this year. He's gonna declare again. He didn't. He came back for another year, partially because the Gator Collective has reportedly. Uh, set up a ton of NIL stuff for him so he can make money. And he can make a lot of money while playing college basketball and you know, have, having more fun with it too and, and dominating as well. But 
then we could talk about last week, where last week uh, rumors started flying around about this other Gator um, initiative, whatever you want to call it, coming about. And it's called the Gator Guard. And that one is a little different. Same, same, but different. Hugh Hathcock, who is a former University of Florida student, <laughs> he was he was for one semester before dropping out to become an entrepreneur. And guess what? Worked out wonderful for him. He, he went to become an entrepreneur, very successful businessman. And he helped start the Gator Guard. He, I guess, I don't even want to say help start. He, he started the Gator Guard and they raised over $5 million in 24 hours from their launch. So it was massive. Hugh Hathcock did donate $3 million there. Um, but the biggest difference between the Gator Collective and the Gator Guard seems to be that, I mean, so far at least, it's that the Gator Collective is open to everybody, the everyday fan. I am a part of the Gator Collective. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, are part of the Gator Collective. If you're not, you should be. It's like uh, six six bucks a month is, I think, the cheapest one, and it goes all the way up to being very expensive. So you, you can be the everyday fan that contributes to the Gator Collective. You get uh, I- exclusive content from these Gators. You get exclusive interviews, uh, Twitter spaces, all, all this fun stuff that it, it kind of helps these players build their brand, make more NIL money, and, and get more involved and, and kind of kind of get to know them better. Like, like if you've listened to uh, – I had Prince Liam and Mialine here a couple weeks ago. I had David Reese here uh, about a month or two ago. They're both Gator Collective athletes. The Gator Collective did help set up the David Reese one. Uh, so so that that's also great where it's like it, it helps media like myself. Uh, Osiris Torrance – did a podcast, I forgot which podcast, but it was a Gators podcast a couple days ago where part of the Gator Collective. That's all important for getting these guys paid, helping them stay in Florida, and helping Florida become an even more elite program. The Gator Guard, more exclusive, high-end, kind of kind of like a booster program, but for NIL, uh, wealthier supporters, I'll say. So I'm not a part of that one. But either way, at the end of the day, it makes Florida that much more powerful. And if you're a high school recruiter, if you're a current Gator it makes it that much more attractive to either come to or stay in Gainesville and continue to contribute there. And I think that's something that that people are really, uh, I think some people are kind of overlooking in terms of just being the Florida Gator elite program that we want to be, the blue blood program that we want to get back to being. And I say back to being because college football playoffs have been around for almost a decade and Florida hasn't been there once and I would like to get there. But either way, again, it helps Florida stay ahead of the curve in this new current NIL era of college sports. And again, whether you like NIL, whether you hate NIL, whether you are completely impartial about NIL, uh, doesn't matter. NIL is here. NIL is here to stay. And college football players are going to get paid regardless of whether you like it. So you might as well be the best at it, right? I think that's the way that we like to approach things in Gainesville. So that's what we're talking about in the Gator Collective and Gator Guard Partnership because they are going to be working together. Haven't really gotten details as to how exactly they're going to be working together, but that partnership will be huge as well because they will continue to work individually and independently, but also together adding more opportunities, more money going to players and more talent coming to Gainesville, hopefully. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Florida Gators. Now make your second listen, Lockdown NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports. That is W-H-O-L-E. And our indie sports, and if you're still here, um, don't forget this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'll post the links on my YouTube channel. But uh, I will be on a live stream for every single pick in the NFL draft. It's going to be a ton of fun and a ton of work. I'm incredibly excited. Did it last year. Had a blast there. Doing it again this year. Going to be bigger, better, cleaner, fresher, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be a much more improved product. But I will see you all tomorrow.